Hi, this is Julie Bernstein Engelman of Beauty and Spirit Art. I'd like to speak to abstract painters about mixing color because everything we do in an abstract painting must be fabulous. We don't have the distraction of representation to hide behind. We really need to know our colors. And after 19 years of teaching abstract painting and two years as a textile colorist in New York City where I did nothing but mix colors, I figured out what I think is the simplest, most streamlined way to teach color mixing for abstract painters to really get a handle on it quickly. So we're going to talk about two main tips today. I want to demonstrate some super helpful color combinations and do a demonstration as well. First color tip, when you move farther apart on the color wheel, you get less intense color mixtures. If you stay close on the color wheel, you'll get the more intense color mixtures. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have the same phthalo blue on all three rows. And here it's mixed with cadmium yellow light. On the color wheel, the phthalo blue is here, cadmium yellow lights over here. And we're going to get the most tube-like green color mixture from those two colors. They're closer on the wheel than these other versions of yellows and warms. Cadmium yellow medium. That's almost all the way across the color wheel. And you can see that you get a much more natural green, kind of like tree leaves. Now, if we want to go to the tree trunk, we can go even further. We've got cadmium red light. And we're going to get a very neutral brown color approaching black. So you are in total control of the intensity of your color mixtures. How do you get the color mixture you want? So that's our tip number two. How are you in control of any given intensity of any color? The quickest way to do that is to go across the color wheel. We're going to use the teeniest bit of purple in our yellow to turn it to gold and the teeniest bit of yellow in our purple to turn it to burgundy. And this is important because it's so tempting as abstract painters to use the color straight out of the tube, but only a couple colors in a painting can get away with being straight out of the tube. We really have to tone down most of our colors and the quickest way to do that is to reach across the color wheel. So now I'm gonna demonstrate a few combinations that are super helpful for abstract artists. Okay, so first, simply a creamy white. We'll take some white and put in a little cadmium yellow light. And then I'm gonna put a little of the cadmium yellow deep. This may seem simple, but white straight out of the tube. It looks like gesso and it's not beautiful. So we can just make it more natural by mixing just a tiny bit of any of your yellows into it. Next, of yellow and purple. Let's just start with some of this yellow. I'm going to mix just the teeniest corner of purple. You see the tiny dot on the edge of my brush. I'll mix that in. And now I've got a beautiful gold going. As you may know, if we mix in, in between the two colors, we can get a nice neutral. I want to go though to the other side of the color wheel and start with purple to show you that as well. So there's our purple straight out of the tube. And now we're just going to mix a little yellow into that. Do you see that it's already turned a beautiful burgundy? It's moved it from being a bright purple to a very natural color. Now we're back at our medium tone there. So that's dioxazine. And we're going to mix some yellow into that. Now we, we have sort of a handle on purple. The next color combination is how to mix a dark. And we're going to use another combination that's across the color wheel from each other. So here we have some pure phthalo blue, and we're going to go across the color wheel and mix just a bit of cadmium red light into it. We are starting to get a very beautiful teal color. So this is the pure phthalo blue. My mixture is very different. Now we're going to get more cadmium red light in there. We've got a beautiful green, and now we're going to get that dark. We're going to the neutral. We get a beautiful, a rich browns. So now I'm going to get more rusty because I'm going to add more and more red. Put a little phthalo blue in there, and it gets toned down to this beautiful soft fall leaf kind of color. You're in control of this whole range 
from the bright red down to the soft color and then all the way through the greens to the teals to the brilliant blue. That's how to make a dark. Let's go to how to make a black. We're going to make a black a couple ways. One is to use cadmium red medium to phthalo green. Okay, there's our cadmium red medium. Now I'm going to just add a tiny bit of phthalo green. Again, just a tiny corner. Now we have kind of a red black and we're getting into some serious black here. You have to be a little careful about the balance to get a purely neutral black. And then if you want to go further toward the greens, and you can get a beautiful greenish black. So you're in control of those blacks. Let me also talk about quinacridone magenta and hooker's green. If we go around the color wheel just a bit to our magenta, we can tone that down a little bit with the hooker's green, and those can end up making a nice black as well. Next, how to mix a beautiful gray. Because as you know, gray can be hard to get for one thing, and it can be hard to mix again the same gray if you run out of your mixture. And why not just use these things from the tube? Because they're not as beautiful. You can't make them just what you want and make them interesting. So a quick way to a gray, a beautiful gray, is to use cerulean and red oxide. Now, it wouldn't have to be cerulean, it could be phthalo blue, and you can get the same idea with phthalo blue. Beautiful icy blue. We can make it more icy by going toward the more cerulean. And then, of course, adding different amounts of white is necessary for regulating your values. Now, let's add a little bit more of the red oxide, go toward a warm gray. See if we can get any gray we want. So the only thing is a, a little bit of yellow sometimes is good in there and that can warm it up if it's just too cool. So between those two colors with the addition of yellow, you can get any gray you want. So easy and so easy to recreate a color that you mixed. One last thing I wanna show you is toning down a green. You know, just cause green doesn't go across the color wheel so well. If we cross the color wheel from green to red, you know what we get, we get the black. So how do we tone down our green? So instead, we're going to go to the orange and yellows. And you see that I have control over my whole range of greens here. And of course, if I use hooker's green, that would be a softer green. I wouldn't have so far to come in my mixture. So there you have some of my favorite color combinations. I have these tips on a, a chart that you can get free on my website. One more thing I thought I would do is demonstrate the use of these mixtures so that you know sort of how they can act. Here's the creamy white and the beautiful grays making a home for the painting. Then the toned down purples and yellows and what I call a drippy white. And now the cadmium red light and the phthalo blue combination for shadow wiping. And here's my energy gesture and toned down greens. This is done with my eyes closed and some feeling painted lines and mixed black. Learn much more in my Inspired Abstract Workshop. See the workshops page on my website. That's where you can get your free color mixing tips chart as well. So here's to your making beautiful art that speaks to the heart and spirit.